Hey kids, welcome back to The Mandalorian. It's Star Wars Minutes, weekly podcast where we go through Disney Plus's exclusive series, The Mandalorian, one episode at a time. I'm Alex Robinson. I'm Pete the Retailer. Welcome back, Pete. Welcome back to you. Happy uh, post-Thanksgiving uh, stupor. Um, <laughs> What'd you call me? <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're deep back in it. Yeah. No rest for the wicked. Uh, today's episode is episode 13, chapter 13. Wait, is it episode or chapter? It's chapter 13, season two, episode five. <laughs> yes. And it is called The Jedi. The Jedi. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll get right to it then. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts off on some uh, mystery planet. You going to say something? It's Caladan or whatever. The, whatever they said um, last time, you know, they were looking for the... Uh, right, right. What, what, In the uh, cold opening, we don't, know what's, we don't know what's going on with the... Right. It's, well, yeah. we, we can guess that it's where Starbuck told her to go. Yeah. All right. Um, you win. Uh, so yes, we cut to uh, Caladan, and we see um, a bunch of anonymous guard type guys getting uh, mm-hmm. hunted down and butchered by our old friend Ahsoka Tano. Yeah, you know, I saw a lot of um, speculation. People were all week. People were just like, you know, counting down. Can't wait to see Ahsoka Tano this week. And I was like, yeah. if I was, if I were smart, if I was in charge of this, and I was smart. Mm-hmm. I would totally delay that gratification for a bit. I would make that, you know, like you do the the, the, the Christmas special, the um... right. Well, wrap up the season with you know, okay, finally he finds the Sogatano, and that's you know, like it, even the the whole way that this episode plays out, this could have easily been the season finale. You know what I mean? Maybe expanded a little bit. And granted, I don't know where it's going to go from from here, but. Mm-hmm. I think if you would have had a couple, and I, I hate to say it, but a couple more quote unquote filler episodes, mm-hmm. you know, throw in a couple of more, um, you know, episodes where he's kind of finding his way, like he has to get there, you know, it's, uh, they, you know, that kind of throw in a couple more Incredible Hulk, Kung Fu, uh, Xena episodes mm-hmm. in a good way, not in a bad way. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, then have it, you know, make it, make it, this could have been, you know, Potentially, you know, a, a, a season finale kind of thing where he finally finds the because there, there's a lot of uh, information imparted here and a lot of new feels like it's we're, we're given a little bit of a new direction overall. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this could have been easily um, the season finale. Um, but so I saw a lot of a lot of people kind of clamoring all week, and I, I totally would have I, in my head. I was like, they're not going to do that. There's no way they're just going to go straight from last week mentioning you go find a Sogatano, and this week just go to a Sogatano. I mean, they made us they made us wait wait two weeks to get to Frog Lady's planet. There's no way we're just going to go straight to. Well, Ahsoka technically, Tano. it was two weeks because it was two weeks ago that we saw Starbuck. Right, right. They oh, stopped right. That, um, they stopped that um, Apollo Creed planet first. Right, right, right. Okay. So, All right, so there you go. Yeah, I forgot world, about so. that, so yeah, it's a little bit better. But um, well, I, for one, am glad that they did not have her um, did not save it for the season finale. And here's why: I already think that this episode is it feels like a backdoor pilot to an Ahsoka Tano show. Yeah, like, like or like a, no other characters that that are that we're familiar with, and it's setting up storylines that are that at this that we know nothing about in our Mandalorian storyline, and so as such, I was intensely aggravated by it. Yeah, because it, it, I was like, just do what, just do a standalone episode of Ahsoka Tano. Then don't clog up an episode of the Mandalorian. Like filling in, where's General Thawne? When he said, she said General Thrawn, I was like, oh my gosh, they're really, every yeah. time we think we're out, they pull us back in. I wrote Thrawn yawn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, anyway, it, it, it totally, it seemed like, yeah, either like a backdoor pilot or like a, uh, like a celebrity guest star episode. And not, not because of Rosario Dawson, but because of Ahsoka Tano, who I, I think, you know, because it's yeah. like, it's like they rewrote the, the, script around oh we got this celebrity guest who's a big fan of you know like they they would do that it's the Qui-Gon Jinn thing all over again kind of yeah um where it's just like well we got this character here just for this episode so we have to let's make it all about them and have it be a thing and then at the end it'll be like so long you'll have some wacky adventures you know 
the fact that it ends at a long lingering shot of Ahsoka Tano is it to me right. was emblematic of like the 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 the, 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 the focus being uh, lo- the loss of focus is yeah. what I think. We know we know Dave Filoni loves Ahsoka Tano, and I'm sure for th- I'm sure a lot of Ahsoka fans are going to be like they can't believe we're complaining about this. Well, and that's the thing. I'm not you know I, I don't I'm not not an Ahsoka Tano fan. I, I like her yeah. as a character. I think it's a cool concept. I think it's a cool idea. But it's again, yeah, just just do a a you know Ahsoka Tano holiday special. Do a um you know. Just, just do an episode focusing on her instead of derailing the, the, you know, the Mandalorian to be, uh, um, you know, where basically all he does is stop, you know, talk to her for a minute and get, you know, same as always. It's, you know, at the end, it's just like, oh, well, maybe if you go to this planet and talk to this person, they'll point you in the right direction. You know, it's like oh, a video I game know. quest thing, which yeah. is, which is, again, you could go one way or the other. Like, if you, you know, lean into the. Incredible Hulk, Kung Fu, Xena kind of thing. And there's all the people yelling at me about, you know, whatever whatever overarching plot Xena had. But but do that, you know, and, and that's fine. And go for it. And then, you know, like, spring, that's what I'm saying. Like, start out, you know, have your tent posts, tent poles of arc, story arc. And then in between, have some Hulks. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that kind of a thing. And then I, I have no problem with the way that it's, the structure S- structured that way you know like if that's the show that you're doing but then it kind of also backs off and it's like oh well no wait we're having this like it's also tied into the saga you know it's also yeah. weighted down by this this double barrel continuity nonsense you know of like oh like like legends and canon are all both weighing heavily on this and it's like <laughs> no 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 like it, just let it be its own thing, because that's what I loved about it. You know that it was this awesome old, little old thing. I I agree that they can do um, standalone episodes, but I did not think this was a good example. Aside from the Silkatano stuff, right. I thought the bad guy was very boring. Oh yeah, and, uh, visually it was very boring. There was nothing interesting going. This was like uh, it, it seemed it seemed very fan filmy. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. It seemed very low budget. And like they were trying to hide the fact that it was a low budget. And they put <laughs> the all the effort of war. into a, it, they put all, yeah, and They put all the effort into Ahsoka Tano's makeup. And that was what they focused on. And everything else was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like. Right. And then there's so. like, she's got some people in cages or something. And they've got to free them. And then, yeah, yeah. there's there's like five people in the cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Um, droids, they, they make a big deal about this. These assassin droids, and I didn't even couldn't even tell what they looked like. They were so like nondescript and so in the background. Yeah, and and the 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 way that the basically the thing that the Mandalorian has done to me is make me assume that anytime anything is kind of built up in a weird way and not like like the assassin was like oh and they have these assassin droids and I'm like. Oh, that must be a thing that I don't know about. That these assassin droids are, are mm-hmm. you know, um, in in the cartoons or in books or something. That these assassin droids are known to be. And looked it up. No, this is the first appearance of those assassin droids, and they make it like a big deal. And then they just get cut through. Yeah, and then that, that's it. And it's, um, but all right, let, let's step through it. I, I read, yeah, Ahsoka off the bat. Um, so it's you know letting us know like it wasn't even. Not only was it not the end of the season, it wasn't even the end of the episode that they went. They went to you know. I like gonna, that. I'd rather there. that. I'd rather they have that and surprise us with it than, right? You know, like okay, we know she like the the you know episode of the crossover episode where Spock showed up on Next Generation, <laughs> and he literally showed up at the last scene where he's like, right. "Oh, I'm Spock," and then it's to be continued. Yeah. So I'm glad they didn't do that. And I thought Rosario Dawson did a good job as a Sokotano. Yeah, I feel I bad know. for the other the other lady who didn't get it, the one who did the voice of the cartoon, but right, they're used um, to that by now. And I know, I think they're. I I, I haven't exactly, um, you know, I I don't know what other. Uh, I think there's some there's some issues with her, right? Hasn't she hasn't she been? Uh, somebody had umbrage with it, and I, I forgot why. Really? I, I I think huh. it's some you know. Um, it's something that I'm sure is valid, but, uh, you know, as I've said before, I only know her as, you know, she is a fan going way back, like, of stuff, like, uh, you know, she's a, 
What's the nature of the objection? I, I do not know. Um, is it something she did, or are, or are certain fans mad that she's just doing the part? You no, know no, I, I think mean? I think it was something that she did or said that hmm. people, I don't know. Um, besides being Cory Booker's beard, <laughs> that uh, um, that I I think there's something um, untoward that she she did or said at some point. But I I not knowing, you know, I I've uh, she was uh, you know she was in New York. A New York uh, a nerd, such mm-hmm. as it is, you know. I, I she used to be. Uh, um, I don't think I ever met her, but uh, but her her mother and her brother used to come into Forbidden Planet a lot, and uh, and I know that they're you know, I know that she's genuine in her uh, appreciation for this kind of stuff. So, but I, I, that to me just seems like it shouldn't have anything to do with it. No, it, I, for me I that's great. With the, that's I bonus, think I like, like Star Wars. I don't think I don't think uh, the German guy. What's his name? Oh yeah, I don't think I don't think he likes Star Wars. <laughs> the German guy, what's his name? Um, no, but that, that's Herzog. Yeah, it's a different thing. Like it, for me, that's it's gravy. A that's a bonus. I hate to bring yeah. up gravy on the day after Thanksgiving, but it's mm. um, you know, it, it's additional. It's like oh, good. Well, I, I could tell you know, like 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 Starbuck. Like Starbuck is a fan of this kind of a thing. She's into it, and that makes it better in a sense. You know, that gives us an extra level of appreciation. That it's like oh, they're they're really into this kind of a thing. There's no like. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what um, I had to look her up and I, I closed it because I don't I don't see her name in front of me. But I was uh, uh, Diana Lee Inosanto played uh, Morgan too. Elsbeth, mm-hmm. and I she is primarily a um, you know a martial artist and a stunt person, and um, mm-hmm. that makes sense because I I thought her her acting was completely unbelievable. It seemed like she almost had a problem keeping a straight face throughout all of this as she was spouting kind of uh, like. She, this trying to stilted like fantasy dialogue nonsense, and uh, yeah. I was like, "You can do it, or you can not." And I don't, I don't, I didn't find her believable at all. Um, but she's good in the fighting parts because that's you know again her. She's very talented with that kind of a um, that kind of a thing, and I'm sure she's mm-hmm. um, probably she's done other acting too, and I'm sure she's good in other parts. But I did not believe her for a second as this. It's, it would totally seem like either she thought she was too good for it, or she just wasn't. I don't know, didn't lock into the part or something. But I didn't believe like she. It seemed like she had a problem keeping a straight face when she was supposed to be delivering these like lines with you know gravitas of like I'm going to destroy the village, but she was like I'm going to destroy the village. Um, that was my impersonation. That was great. I thought, um, you, I thought that was the soundboard for a second. Yeah, that, and, and that, which led to my next note. Of why can't anybody talk normal? Everybody has to talk in this like like fantasy, you know, like I have destroyed it instead of like, you know, like we must go to the village. And it's like, why? why like, yeah, just, just they all talk like data. Like one, they can't use contractions. And right. Like or but it, again, it's, it's going to turn into my crusade against fantasy. But uh well, this one, this episode definitely uh, leans on that. But I, I, I could tell, I could hear your eyes rolling all the way from here when yeah. cutting, you know, cutting to spoiler alert in the last scene where he was like, "Go to the ancient ruined temple and put him on the seeing stone." And then the th- I was like, "Oh my god, this is exactly the kind of terrible uh, fantasy stuff that right. I don't like." And we have call out through the force, and yeah. a Jedi might <laughs> hear that and. Be, oh. <laughs> well anyway so uh, meanwhile back on the ship uh, baby yoda is trying to steal the little knob little interplay between baby yoda and uh, calling back to the knob which we saw him sure. fascinated by uh last season and uh um, you know i i uh i my my parent instinct like at this point kicked in was like we're still doing that like if i were him i would have just bought him another knob at some point uh-huh like because that's you know if the kid's obsessed with that all right get him one of his own you know, for life day, get him, oh, here you go, look, it's your own knob. Or give him that knob and buy another one, buy a little eight ball or a skull knob to put on your controller. He should have a cooler knob anyway. <laughs> yeah, but I, uh, the thing I, I like about knob. it, <laughs> I, eventually his whole, sh- everything he owns is going to be replaced by a Beskar version of that right, thing. Yeah. Um, I kind of like that he didn't do that. It's the same way when he was like, I, when he brings baby Yoda to Ahsoka Tano and is like, I want you to train him. 
And I thought it was weird because if I like was taking a baby to someone, I'd be like, here's your baby that you can now raise it or take care of it. My first instinct wouldn't be, here's a baby for you to train. Right. But this guy grew up in a, in a military secret cult. So right. I'm sure to him, like you have to teach the baby the discipline of whatever I say. You know, there could be a true. thousand yeah. knobs here, but you still can't touch any of them. That's right. the rules, you know, so not like he's coddled human babies. <laughs> get whatever they want yeah um a lot of baby yoda stuff in there. a lot of uh well Can obviously grogu stuff <laughs> well should we talk about that now then <laughs> um well I, I had two notes before we get to grogu which i wrote in big okay. big capital letters uh three actually one I, I i as much as i did not believe her character for a second i do love the title of magistrate i think that's mm-hmm. one of my favorite titles it's a good one not one you hear very much yeah um I also was wondering if any of the, because this planet, the kind of, you know, charred, desolate planet, I wonder if any of it was filmed here in Los Angeles, in the Los Angeles area after the forest fires. I wonder if they took advantage of that. They're like, oh, let's make the planet look like that, you know. <laughs> Originally, it was going to be set on a lush green world. Right, yeah. Like, oh, now it's suddenly <laughs> decimated. Uh, no longer indoor. And... uh I also wrote um, uh, Beskar is like Scooby Snacks <laughs> because <laughs> <He'll do anything. laughs> as we go through the show, it's just like he's like, they're like, oh, come with us. And he's like, no. And they're like, we'll give you some Beskar. And he's like, OK, <laughs> or Beskar. <laughs> Roy. Uh, I like that he calls the uh, person vendor. I thought that was an interesting, you know, the uh, the merchant there. Oh, the yeah. Like, vendor, where do I? How? And the guy, person runs away. Vendor. That was his name. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought the torture cha- cages were pretty cool, actually. Something we haven't really seen in uh, Star Wars. You've seen a lot of torture, but, right. you know, the people being in cages. It seemed it seemed gruesomely realistic, basically. Yeah. Not necessarily that- something that I wanted, but it was kind of cool. It, it's, at least it's, you know a sci-fi-ish way to do it. Um, I feel like, though, at some point, you know, two episodes ago, they figured out, uh, they're like, oh, we, we figured out the uh, the skeleton through the, showing the skeleton from from the end of Return of the Jedi. We figured out how to do that again. <laughs> like, like let's lean into that a little bit because, uh, you know, Desmond, no, not Desmond, the other guy from Lost, Mr. Black or whatever, he, you know, had his cyanide capsule shocked him and you saw his skeleton through it and then... Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody got it last week, but then now we're doing it again. Oh, could you see a skeleton? I did not notice that. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, that, that might be a bit much. Uh, I also like when he says that he keeps Baby Yoda around for luck. I thought that right. was a good, uh, a funny little thing. For He's luck. Green, you should have kissed him when he... <laughs> you rub him on your head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we saw his uh, monocular, his little... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Little... Telescope. Oh, thing. don't do that. It makes your face disappear. But yes. Yeah, the little... Uh... <laughs> Most people like it when my face disappears. <laughs> um, it'd be awesome if that was just a kaleidoscope. Every once in a while, mm. he was just like, do, 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 do. Baby Yoda switched it. Baby Yoda has yeah. his telescope and he has... Did we already joke about that? Like Mandalorian looking through that and then he, like, he's got a big black eye or... When he... <laughs> it would be on the outside of his helmet. We probably right, did. Yeah. We probably did. Like a little... Maybe a little white eye mark on his on his visor. So uh, Boba Fett agrees to hunt down this Jedi, or it says he'll yep. he'll tells the personnel of the Jedi. Then they meet, and um, she reveals that Baby Yoda's name is not actually Baby Yoda. Yeah, it's not. Were right. It's not the the child. It's not Baby Yoda. It's it's uh, it's Grogu. Grogu. Grogu the Baby Yoda. Grogu. 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 Hmm. That's uh. They'll call him Gooey when he gets home. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did you think? Um, you know, it's not. There's no way that they could have, unless, of course, you know, it, they went with my choice of Yodel. There's no way that there was going to they they were going to reveal his name and have it n- not be kind of disappointing. Yeah. Um, Should they have not revealed his name? I feel like that actually. Yeah, well, that's another it's something I got into later. There's also, you know, like I was pretty sure that there was no, there's no way that he was just gonna 
you know, send Baby Yoda off, sorry, Grogu off with uh, Grogu off with um, with the Sokotano because I feel like they're stuck by marketing now. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, I mean, to me, well, also to me, I guess that's the whole premise of the show. That's like, right. That's like uh, surely leaving the show, and then they're like, okay, right. well, let's keep doing it anyway, you know? Right, yeah. Well, it's like, uh, you know... The, it... Surely from what's happening, I mean, not surely from Laverne and Shirley. <laughs> um, they, but they could have, you know, it'll be almost like, uh, let's say you're replacing Chrissy on, on Three's Company, where they could have done it. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while, he would have called uh, Grogu back at the Jedi Temple, be like, how's training going? And he would have had a little... <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but, no, I think the... Uh, you know, again, if if this was more of the season finale, you know, they could have done that. And I thought, you yeah. know, they could have even he he gives them either they were going to team up and do the rest of it together, or they were going to, you know, or he could have given it to her and then come back. Like at the end of the season, it would have been like, oh, he had to go back and he had to reclaim Grogu because something bad was happening. Yeah. Um. But I knew that that wasn't going to be, you know, there was never it wasn't really a goodbye, even though they kind of paint it to be one. Um, but yeah, I uh, never really for a second thought that there was any serious chance of him. Yeah, because they're trapped by market. You know, it, it they would be better served if if you know Baby Yoda goes off to train with Ahsoka Tano. They're better off following them than they are following the Mandalorian. You know, they're like Mandalorian could just go off and go sit somewhere else, and and you know then they'll call you know the Mandalorian's family or whatever. Let him write him out, and then. Stick with Ahsoka Tano and Baby Yoda. The Ahsoka reveals that she actually is the titular Mandalorian oh, this whole go. time, and <laughs> that uh, <laughs> I think uh, I don't think I will disagree with your detective work there a little bit. I think if the show was Ahsoka and um, Baby Yoda, I think a certain percentage of the audience, i.e., me and a people, would would not be less inclined to watch it. I think the Mandalorian. But is it like a a macho enough gateway where people are willing to put up with a baby Yoda? But if it's a lady, a lady Jedi training a baby Yoda is just too. It's too you know nurturing. Well, you would obviously you would introduce you would introduce some other you know like a Kilowog type of character, some like big brute who, who uh-huh. assists in the Jedi training. But right. um, I think it's the I think we're in the middle of that. And we're the ones that matter the least because I think that the oh, hardcore Star Wars fans, <laughs> we're, yeah. we're definitely the ones that matter the least. The hardcore Star Wars fans who would love would love an Ahsoka Tano show would be on board, and then the you know the casuals, you know the moms at the mall who, who love Baby Yoda, they would still be on board because there would still be Baby Yoda cute stuff all the time. I, but I feel like then you'd have Clone Wars, and that was never as popular as because well, it was the, a cartoon. I think if if yeah, you had a more. Too. Um, yeah. But maybe we're underselling the, uh, you know, the the macho um, men's rights activists that are just watching it for the for the gunfights. <laughs> Less, uh, to, God forbid, we uh, don't cater to their every whim. I was surprised that uh, the Mandalorian has not, because they've been together for a few months now. Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. Okay. That um, the Mandalorian did not give him a. At least a nickname. Well, he just calls him kid, right? I know, but you know, you you have small children. Surely you give them a thousand different nicknames. Yeah. In, in the same amount of time, so Although, I'm surprised. I but also, then again, he comes from a military cult, so right. Um. Although maybe that's a you know they, maybe they don't do that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Maybe it's just that you know, it would be disrespectful for me to call you by any other yes. name. It would be given. A, a, yeah. It is <laughs> totally that fantasy dialogue. Yeah. Um, I would have given him a bunch of nicknames by then. Sure. A green. <laughs> um, Half pint. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, she also gives us a timeline of a bit of insight into Baby Yoda's life. Uh, we know he's 50 years old. Right. Uh, he This series takes place nine uh, ABY. Right. And it, so that would mean it's been 29 years since the Empire fell. Hmm. No, no, since the Empire started. Hmm. It's, 20 years, it's 29 years since Revenge of the Sith, basically. Okay. So Nine, your baby Yoda right. would, would have been 21 at the time of that, at the time the Empire was born. Oh, all right. 
So he would have gone out and gotten wasted. Yeah, I was rum springer. Right. Uh, I wonder if the Jedi have a version of the of the rum springer. They totally should. Hmm. Probably. Um, anyway, so I thought it was interesting that he was twenty one, and she was like, he had many masters over the years that he was there. Hmm. So, um, you know, clearly to us, he still looks like a baby. You probably, you know, if he's this little now, imagine what he was like twenty nine years ago. He would have been like. You know, like a a tiny little thing. Right. Well, that must be a special kind of, you know, they have different tracks for different species, Mm -hmm. you know, because he's uh, he's like, oh, we have to keep him, you know, we have to keep him here and prevent him from, you know, uh, forming attachments and all this other stuff. But we have to, um, you know, he grows slowly. So we got to at least work through it and get somebody's just got to watch him for a bit. You know, it's like a. It's like when a, when like a, a pet turtle gets passed down to, to a, a new generation of owners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I did like when they were talking about that though. They get uh, we got a little uh, little hint of uh, Yoda's music, Yoda's theme from Empire. Mm. I didn't notice that. Um, it cool. just kind of filtered through for a second. It was just a little like tease of that, um, combined with the- then. A little bit later, when when uh, Ahsoka Tano is describing the Force to the titular Mandalorian, she was like, "It's an energy mm-hmm. field created by all living things." And I was like, "Yeah, go on, go on." <laughs> I think they should have had a little bit of a uh, weird Al's Yoda in the <laughs> like a little hum you know, going through the background. Um, that should have been like the training montage. She's like, "All right, I'll train him in the morning," and then like cut to you know like. Alarm clock going like ant 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 yeah. like six a.m. <laughs> and she hits like snooze and it plays Yoda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, yeah, she does a little kind of training thing, and I was wondering. She starts out with rocks, of course, and I'm wondering: Are this is my question? Are rocks classic Jedi training instruments because they are devoid of life? Because they're so lifeless that that's the like if you you know because. The force is an energy field created by all living things. If you try to lift up like a tree, there's life in the tree that you could be kind of, kind of, kind of communicating with. But the the test is, all right, there's no life in that rock, so lift the rock. You know what I mean? So you're not cheating by, you know, ask getting the tree's help, <laughs> essentially. It's interesting that you say that because now that I think about it, in I don't th- I think it's in the original trilogy, I don't think they ever use the force to move a person. Or a living creature, do they? Um, well, I was going to say C-3PO, but he's not a living creature. Yeah, we see people hurl things at each other. We see the right. X-Wing get lifted up. We see R2 get lifted up. I can't think of any, like, force choking, I guess, inf- but it doesn't lift. No one ever gets lifted up by it. Right. Hmm. Huh, interesting. I wonder if that's an example of power creep. Hmm. Yeah, I can't think of it either. Obviously, by the time they're doing lightsaber battles in the prequels, they're starting to force push people around and stuff. Right. Yeah. Like, once, I feel like Dooku does that a lot. Yeah, and and the in the battle in the the, the control room battle, the the power chamber battle in in Phantom Menace, there's some force push and all stuff like that. So. Okay. But I like the I like that uh, not being able to do it on living things. That's an interesting mm. uh, wrinkle. Well, it's not necessarily not being able to do it, but it's just not. It's a better uh, example right. of training. Or, right. Yeah. If you can lift rocks, because there's no energy. They're, they're, rocks aren't generating their own force. So do you think when Obi-Wan did the seeker ball, was that a mistake? Was that like an example of how he was using technology instead of a simple, well, it's still, basically like a man-made rock that shoots little rocks out of it? Still, <laughs> Arkansas. There's there's no... um, you know. There, there, Again, it's lifeless. You know, it's not. It's it doesn't. It's not generating its own force. Like if he had picked right. up like an orange, if he had levitated fruit across the table, let's say, hmm. put it in Luke's mouth. <laughs> yeah, that would have been uh, creepy. Just to shut him up. <laughs> <laughs> Puts a pie in his face. Uh, oh, so man. also, uh, please, uh, it, it, it got to be in Lego Star Wars or something. We have to see a force pieing at some point, right? Hmm. Yeah. I know everybody's secretly listening to this who's making these shows. They're making they're making Droid Tales and and uh, Mandalorian and all that from our from our uh, our spitballing here. Come on, have a force force pie. 
Uh, so Ahsoka mentions that she only knew one other creature like Baby Yoda, which uh, either so which means either she didn't know Yaddle or is too embarrassed to admit she knew Yaddle. She didn't exactly. see Yaddle. <laughs> um, Back at the uh, Jedi base. So, uh, <laughs> or do you think if she had said, "Oh, I've I've only known two other creatures like this," that the normies would be like, "Well, wait a minute, who's the other one?" There is another Yoda. Right, there is <laughs> another knowing that Yoda. <laughs> Um, the, I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't, um, it says, uh, Yaddle was only in the Phantom Menace and Ahsoka Tano wasn't introduced, you know, chronologically until after Attack of the Clones. Well, that's it. Yaddle and the Jedi, uh, after the Battle of Naboo, Yaddle took a less active role in the Jedi Order's affairs and was no longer on the High Council by the time of the Clone Wars. So Yaddle maybe like retired. Maybe over the decision uh, to to train or not train the chosen one. Maybe well, that, that would be like, interesting if Yaddle was the one training the baby Yoda. That would have been an interesting. Uh, like if she dissented. Yeah. Or yeah, or that could be. Maybe that's why she retired to have a baby. And that baby was baby Yoda, and that was Grogu. Um, the timing of that would not work. And well, why not? When is that? Well, because if Baby Yoda was 21 at the time the Empire fell, that means he would have been born. Um, yeah, so it's about 10 years off, right? So if that's yeah. 32 BBY is when she was on the council to to yeah. judge Anakin Skywalker. So that would be about, yeah, it would be about 40 years later, not 50. So she's got, unless she has a 10-year-old at this point. Yes, but then she was still, and she was also still on the council when it said she, you know, right. Maybe, yeah. Anyway, all right. So uh, obvious, and she also then probably, she's not counting Evan Peel either, right? Because he's not part of that. Uh, he's like half. <laughs> he's not half Yoda, is he? I don't know. He looks it. He looks it. I wasn't know, he was reading, wasn't he like yeah. a, an attempt? I don't know. <laughs> he was an early tried to clone Yoda. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> right, maybe yeah. We shouldn't do this anymore. Um. But it's also because I would have assumed that even if Yaddle wasn't on the council, everyone would know Yaddle because she's basically the Frank Stallone of the Star Wars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like she's the the less famous, less talented sister of the most famous Jedi in the world. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Could be maybe maybe she's to, she was only there for a little bit, and so it's hard to maybe she's more like the boner bane <laughs> of. Uh, <laughs> Of of the Star Wars universe, I know that uh, I don't know. <laughs> Yoda's more famous than Conrad Bain, even in our <laughs> world. So, never mind in Star Wars world. It's true. Um. Uh. I also well that that brings us to the the training of of Jedi Yoda, where Ahsoka refuses. She's like, no, I I I'm not going to train him because he's he's already got attachments. Too old. Um, and uh, that, and she's like, you know, I've seen that. And of course, we all know why, but it's an interesting, you know, even if you don't know why, it's an interesting thing saying like, no, I've, I've seen that, you know, I've seen that go wrong to the best. It's happened to the best of us, you know, that. Uh, Have you ever heard the legend of Yaddle? <laughs> um, but um, the that instantly made my mind spin and think about, wow, like, what if we got like a dark Yoda? That would be cool. I, well, yeah, they've been kind of um, teasing around that. Remember last season we choked, uh, he was choking, you know, he started choking people and uh, other stuff. So uh, I think right. they've definitely be hint, been hinting at the possibility that this could be, uh, uh, that this Yoda could, you know, I guess like every living thing, it has the dark side and the light side in it. It's true. It's two sides to every force and it's three sides the to every story. Um, um, laser swords. Laser swords. The Mandalorian uses the phrase, not even your laser swords will be able to stop them. So I like that. Of course. Yeah. I did like that. And I, it, I guess it happens in the cartoon. Like I was like, well, are, are, are they just not colored well enough or are her lightsaber is white? And it turns out they are white. That was like a, a wrinkle mm-hmm. that happened, I guess, in, yeah. in one of the, um, iterations, which of course... I don't. I don't like this. Like, you don't like the novelty lightsabers. 
I don't like novelty lightsabers when it's just one thing. You know, if if like, you know, like Ray having a yellow lightsaber at the end of Rise of Skywalker is fine because we saw a couple of yellow lightsabers and the yellow lightsaber, you know, is a thing. But it's just like, you know, that that kind of uh, uh, it's like the the other isn't there like a gold phasma now too and like a red it's like you know like when you do it once it's like oh that's different that's it's like the gold cylon and then introducing more you know when you do it once it's kind of cool and then and it's like oh it's the you know but then when you keep kind of going back and no 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 there's also you know you end up with the you know the the emotional spectrum of green lanterns and and it's like well we don't we don't want all of that it's just kind of you know it's it's overdoing it again the white lightsabers the dark saber it's got all this you know too much yeah like we, we we we're beating beating this thing to death taking a cool thing and beating it to death is is the problem um yeah i guess one person's one person's uh right beating it to death is another person's we want to see more different color lightsabers i'm sure there are people who love that they're but, a thousand different color lightsabers. Uh, yeah. And again, that's not, yeah, great. If you're introducing white lightsabers and, you know, but it's just like, no, this is this one special thing that this person has. And there's like, oh, and then this is also this other special thing that this person has. And then it's like, oh, and then this, you know, it's like. I see what you mean. It's yeah. like, this is so cool and different and special. And then this is also so different and cool and special. It's just like, no, just you can introduce new lightsabers and it's fine. But when you make it a big, when you make a big thing out of that, this is this, you know, mythical, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, not a, but that being said, I thought the lightsaber fights in this were cool. She was there was cool. The, her lightsaber technique is neat. You know, it's that different um, that two saber technique that we've seen her do mm-hmm. in in the cartoons, and and uh, kind of Ventress was a similar kind of a thing in the cartoons, and that um, you know, seeing it live action against you know, uh, in this case, not not even against other lightsabers, just seeing it against an army is kind of cool. Yeah, it's always also um, them coming up with different, trying to come up with. Now they have this Beskar, they they can have theoretically Beskar? something that can stop, stop lightsabers because they always have to, the challenge of this coming up with how do you fight someone with a lightsaber if you don't have a lightsaber? So right. you have to they have to keep improvising ways of like, oh, this is a a, a, a sonic sword that yeah. can you know, or oh, this is Beskar, it can't cut through. Uh, <laughs> it's like they should have made the Death Star a Beskar. Oh, best, Death, Death Star, Star Best Death Star. Star. <laughs> Maybe that was like a game of telephone. <laughs> uh, like we call yeah, it the like Best Star. W- okay, Death Star. Got it. <laughs> when they cut that big bell in half, that was a pretty cool that was uh, satisfying. trick. Because yeah. also, like, when she got up there, and I was like, why? Like, why doesn't she cut that bell? Because that's like that's what they use to like get the army, or, like rouse the army every time she attacks. Mm-hmm. Like, why doesn't she just cut the bell in half? And then she did. Yeah, and it was satisfying. Um, yes. Yeah, so, well, I also like that they were using an old-fashioned way of alerting people—an actual physical bell, as opposed yeah. to like a, arr, arr, you know, that kind of. A thing. It's funny because yeah, uh, just yesterday, uh, uh, as part of a trying to rekindle a Thanksgiving tradition, I watched King Kong with my kids, and that um, they they use a similar, you know, there's like a bell on top of a gate. There's the, a lot of this. Yeah. That whole sequence kind of reminded me of King Kong. Yeah, I believe it. I was just telling someone that and, uh, they used to sh- on the Thanksgivings they used to show on Channel Nine. They used to show a whole bunch of uh, yeah. King Kong and Mighty Joe Young and all those. Yeah, things. King Kong, Son of Kong, Mighty Joe Young. That was, and I tried yeah. to kind of rekindle that a little bit and watch the. Anyway, um, my next note is Lothcat jumps out because <sighs> I, I uh, cat jumps out is one of my favorite things, and Lothcats mm-hmm. are ridiculous, but I like seeing them around oh, for right. some reason. <laughs> And so there's that when they're kind of ma- doing their, uh, you know, um, making their siege on the on the little fortress there, the little temple headquarters, whatever. Um, there's a cat jumps out moment, and it's Loth cat jumps out. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, nice play on the classics. And um, um, I thought that whole sequence was very western. It's a lot of oh, like. Yeah. Standing around, staring at each other, and that kind of a thing. Well, yeah, I like that. Uh, it's a good again the the meat of the show combination, kind of you know western samurai, yeah, thing. So and and this even you have a split, you have parallel action, which is a very Star Wars thing that you have the um, not that they invented it, but it's you know they use it um, 
you know, or at least in the classic <laughs> trilogy and in a lot of other places. They use it well, kind of cutting back and forth between. But here you have, you know, you have the Western thing going on outside with, with Michael Bean. We haven't even talked about Michael Bean. Yeah. It took me about 10 minutes through the episode to be like, is that Michael Bean? Like, I guess I haven't seen him in a couple of years. I'm like, it looks that looks like Michael Bean, but like older. <laughs> it's Michael Bean. I did not recognize him. Um, I, I don't think I would recognize Michael Bean from uh, like... I know him from Terminator. I think that's probably the only thing. You know, in Aliens, I, it's definitely it struck me from Aliens. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I, I um, you have the Western thing of that you know showdown, yeah. You know, with between the Mandalorian and Michael Bean, and then inside you have the kind of the more, um, you know, almost like a kung fu movie of like the showdown on the little bridge with the you know the the things going you know the sword fight. A little I like bridge that they could or just, just like hear little... it echoing through the town, where they right, were, yeah. like you could just hear them fighting, and they kind of kind of like following it that way. I thought that was a, a neat um, thing. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, and then again, I, like I thought the fight, the fights were actually pretty cool, and I didn't, uh, you know, I, I wasn't yawning through them. They didn't make it too much of a thing. They didn't kind of linger on them. They were, they were. And part of, part of it could be the parallel action that any time before it got too boring, they would cut to the other one. But yeah, um, but then of course it had to be you know like like where like because the where's your master part, you know she was like where you know that that was its own thing, and I was like oh who could that be? And then like it it I made the mistake of following for it of being like oh who could her master be? And then they're like where is your master? Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? And I was like oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was, um, I uh, really did not like that. No. Because it didn't, it, 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 it really seemed like serving the EU more so than the primary thing should always be the show or series you're in. That should be your main focus. Right. So, I don't know. Like, Well, it, it's an interesting, you know, there's a little Lennon McCartney vibe going on here. Of With us? Well, that too, yeah. Um, but you know, you've got a, um, I, and I'm, I'm hesitant to say who's who, but you've got kind of, uh, um, uh, John Favreau kind of who wants to do Star Wars, you know, the, the 77 Star Wars, he wants to play with his, you know, uh, um, Kenner right. original batch action figures. Um, and then you've got Dave Filoni who wants to g- kind of, you know, dive into the eu and be especially kind of you know the the new eu stuff that he's worked on he has all his customized action figures that he wants to introduce right 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 and yeah, he, he he only got like the mini rigs for christmas and so he wants to tell these different stories um <laughs> but you know it works best when they're kind of they're both pulling at it a little bit but if it goes too far in either direction it's probably yeah. not as satisfying well it, it's a little bit satisfying to me if, if if it's just purely in the original Star Wars direction, but um, I think the show overall works best when they're right, both when has... contributing to it, and so it's, it it has that vibe of original Star Wars, but with little you know tidbits to tie into the um, to the to the EU and the new EU. Um, but th- when it goes full on, like this is you know this is purely this is a. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a good Beatles. It, it depends. We'd have to pin one of those things on. Uh, I don't know. Like, is 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 Filoni John Lennon, or is uh, is I think that Filoni would have to be John Lennon because because that makes Favreau more of the kind of traditionalist, you know, his grandma music. Yeah, I think that's a good a good analogy. So this this is a you know pure pure John going off on his own thing. So Ahsoka is like Revolution Nine. Kind like, of. Hey, I'm bringing this in. Right. You guys don't like it. Yeah. Tough taunt taunts. <laughs> uh, we don't know the fate of the magistrate, do we? Um, no, I don't think so. Right? They just after she's just there to get her to say Thrawn, and then she like basically yeah. disappears into the void. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another reason why it was unsatisfying. Like, if this person is so evil, we don't even know what happened to them in the end. Right. They should have at least shown her tied up and be like, I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you Jedi or something like that. Um, yeah, so looking at what... So during the Clone Wars where people were wiped out, 
She was the sole survivor, and she was later instrumental in the construction of the Imperial Navy. Um, so that, I guess, maybe that ties in with... Th uh, no, wait, because those most of the Thrawn stuff was after the... I don't know. Who cares? The um, <laughs> No, I'm trying to place it with the... The original like throne. They should have tied it in with um, with uh, dark saber guy. That would, seems like it would be it would have been a more a, a satisfying tie-in. Right. Tie-in. He could have flown his tie fighter right into the mm, and be like, "I'm her master." <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that. Um, you know, it's possible that they're you know they're they're building a grander thing here. But again, the more the more blocks of existing legacy uh, uh, continuity that they use to build this, the 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 further away I get. You yeah. know, like they're um, if they're they're you know they're they're it's going to start sagging under the weight of all this other stuff. So, and I'm sure there are plenty of people who will like it, like that aspect of it. Yeah. Know? That I know world building tying everything more in together and and well I like some of it you know I like it when they when it I like it when it is a cool little oh that's neat did you know that you know when this person was talking to this person that was you know yeah um like I I feel like the the um, you know Starbuck the Bo-Katan thing worked a lot better because it's like oh you didn't need to know that this person was real you know like yeah, I didn't, there was enough in I the episode know. to give you the context where you knew everything that was going. You knew got what was going on. Right. Where I feel like this is more like, like you said, it's you know like backdoor pilot or like a, um, you know, celebrity guest star thing where it's just like if you didn't know that this character was important, um, to the people who had been watching the cartoons and stuff, um, then you wouldn't. Um, you you might be a little bit like, why why is this important? Like, why do I care? Yeah, there's a line, but there's like a line where I maybe you could call it the clicker line, where if you're watching it with someone who's a casual fan, and something happens, then you have to pause it and go. Grand Emerald Thawne, Thrawn was part of the, you know, you have to explain right, to yeah. like Darth Maul is still alive because he had big spider yeah, legs the, and then he rebuilt himself and you know like that's my that uh, kind of yeah thing. my my AMC janitor or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit um, I, I, interesting to see. I, I'm I, at the end. I'm kind of glad that they went their separate ways. Yeah. Um, but uh, interesting to see where it because it was like I said. I, I I I tend to prefer if it's these you know ten poles of continuity with kind of you know world building other adventures in between. That you know, all right. Eventually, they were going to get back to the, but yeah. here now we have this big chunk of kind of you know legacy continuity right here, and then we're also which didn't even touch on the you know, um, uh, Moff Gideon and the dark saber, right? So we're, we're and we're going and uh, apparently they're the the troopers from the last one. People were complaining that we don't know that it's uh, it's from video games. I guess right? They're yeah, they're like dark troopers from one of the video games. Um, but again, we shouldn't have to. Yeah. Shouldn't have to know. We, and we didn't in that context, and it right. worked fine. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I, I worry. I'm a little bit worried about the future, although I'm sure a lot of people are excited about it. Um, yeah. I, I'm wondering, you know, I would give Radke a call, see how he liked this episode. There's a um, uh, an Adult Swim show called On Cinema, which is a sure. Tim Heidecker show, and I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it has involved its own really super elaborate continuity, like continuity and meta continuity and and stuff like that. And um, I um, like I don't know other than one other person, I don't know anyone else who's watched the whole thing and and is into it. But it's not the kind of thing where I can say, oh, here, sit down and watch this because it like watching something that is beautifully constructed using continuity that has been building up can be a great thing like infinity war right something like that i have no problem with like okay this is a big crossover thing or whatever but i feel like it um 
in this kind of, uh, for me personally, in this kind of a situation, I don't like it. I guess if I if I don't know the things, then I don't like it. If I know the things, then it's well, super cool when you do a crossover. Right. Like that. Yeah. So I guess I guess everyone's like that. Well, I can understand people saying, "Well, if you watched it, though, this would be this is so cool." And I'm like, "Okay, I believe you." Yeah. But in the context of someone who hasn't seen it, it's not as satisfying. It's kind of like I feel like I'm not in on the joke. Yeah. Or the the storyline. Yeah. Right. Um. So it sounds like we have mixed reviews on this one. Yeah. Uh, overall, it's a, a fun. Like, what if it was a different? Mm. If it was a different Jedi, that's what I'm picturing. If it was a different Jedi that he found, and it wasn't, and they didn't mention Thrawn, would I have liked this episode a lot more? I think it it needed better villains. I think that was the. Oh the, yeah. I would have put up with all the the kind of, uh, to me, it seems kind of soggy things with her trying to train him, and a lot of shots of them just staring at each other for, over right. prolonged periods of time. Although and, I did like the, you know, I I like. Turns out I like Filoni's directing style because the, those mm. he's he lets like I like the way that this episode just kind of let things be quiet from time to time. And that maybe maybe he's like a he's like a George Lucas style director. Unsurprisingly, like I like his his ability to let things be quiet and his in the way his focus. But he could use some work on uh, on the way he deals with his actors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, so how many episodes are we in now? Four. Um, this is five. This was uh, season two, five. episode five. So we've got three more. So maybe this is just going to be all storyline, all continuity from here on in. Uh, I'm going to give, I, I hate to say it, but I think this might be my weakest of the season. Of the season? Definitely. Okay. For me. Sounds like you, you don't hate to say it. You love to say it. I, I, I threw the windows open and I was like, you boy, yeah. what day is this? It's the day that this episode sucked. No. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't suck. It just my, not my. Um, I feel like the first three uh, episodes of the season I loved, and then as soon as we got back into kind of, it's almost like waking up from a dream. That as the reality starts to seep in, that we're we're as soon as we start dealing with the storyline and stuff again, and I'm like, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> um. So I'm a little yeah. Th this was not uh, again. It it was fine, but I was a little bit uh, disappointed. Um, and now we know we have to now at some point we have to sit through him finding the ancient ruined temple and putting Gorgru on the seeing stone and all that stuff. Like we know there's going to be a good chunk of forty five minutes I of the future not. taken up taken up with that. I hope not. It'd be great if the next the next episode started with him being like, "Well, that seeing stone didn't tell us anything, did it?" Yeah. <laughs> um, and it got yeah away. <laughs> <laughs> Grogu's got a little, you know, like uh, I, I visited the Seeing Stone, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. Um, the uh, it did make me think, like, who is is the 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 payoff of this going to be the titular Mandalorian dropping Baby Yoda off at Luke Skywalker's Jedi Academy? <laughs> is the payoff of the whole thing because if this is you know, but what do we say? Nine BBY? No, ABY. Yeah. You know, it's after Return of the Jedi. Luke is going to start doing things, and we've seen that he does eventually start a Jedi Academy. Yeah, theoretically, um, I think so Ben Solo would have been born by now. Um, I don't know. Is that is that true? I, I thought we figured out that he had to be conceived fairly quickly after Return of the Jedi. <laughs> um, Assuming he's the same age as Adam Driver. Let's see. Ben Solo. Spoiler alert. That's his name. Um, born 5 ABY in Chandrila. Okay, so 5, yeah, so he would be about four years old at this point. So you think we're going to get to see a baby Kylo, CGI. baby Yoda, baby B Kylo meeting up, teaming up. Not yeah, baby, totally. but toddler, toddler Tylo and baby Yoda. This is getting to Star Wars babies. That would be great if baby Yoda somehow convinced um, Ben Solo to be go on the dark side. Mm. It was all or him. He, pu he puts a he puts an image in Luke's head of of uh, Kylo becoming evil. And that's right. when Luke goes to try to kill him. And <laughs> <laughs> 
Or uh, they were, but Baby Yoda was also sleeping in that room in the in the same room. It was like you know their dorm. Oh right. And then uh, Luke was coming in to kill Baby Yoda, but Ben thought he was trying to kill oh, him. There you and go. The, you know, whole big misunderstanding. Mm. Um. Well, all so, right. So it sounds like this week was a bit of a miss for us, but um, you know, still some good stuff, uh, some good nuggets in there. Yeah. I'm. Uh, Interested to see what happens next. I'm a little bit hesitant, but interested. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, thanks, everyone, for um, taking part in this with us. You can always listen to our regular show, Star Wars Minute, which you can get wherever you uh, subscribe to podcasts. Or yeah. go to StarWarsMinute.com. And uh, support us on Patreon, StarWarsMinute.com slash Patreon. We have... One show, uh, well, two shows every weekend um, at this point, and uh, we uh, do all kinds of stuff. And if you want to, if you want to support this show, that's the place to do it. You have no limit on aggravating uh, opinions, so uh, check us out, please. <laughs> and and uh, we'll see you on the next <laughs> the Mandalorian. Mandalorian.